Okay, in this video, we'll continue doing another example, another pension worksheet to calculate pension expense. We are going to complicate it a bit more, We're going to incorporate prior service costs. Uh, remember that when you have a, uh, a plan amendment that changes the value of prior year service costs, that will immediately increase your liability, but it will not immediately increase your pension expense. That will be increased in later years uh, as that um, as that amount gets what we call amortized over time. And what is it amortized over? Well, we recognize the pension expense over the remaining service lives of the employees who are going to be benefiting from the change in the plan. Okay, and the the, um, the FASB prefers a years of service method, and we will uh, discuss how that works. Okay, let's look at Rydell Corporation. Got a set of information here. Here's their projected benefit obligation uh, before their plan amendment. And then we have on January 1st, Rydell Corporation, through their plan amendment, grants prior service benefits having a present value of $120,000. Uh, the, they also give you all the information that you're going to need. You know, they give you the plan assets. They give you the pension liability, but you don't really need that, right? You can just figure that out by doing the, uh, the PBO minus the plan assets, of course. They give you the settlement rate of 9%, the service costs, the contributions, how much money has the firm contributed to this plan during the year. We've got the return on plan assets. Again, for right now, for this example, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to say the actual and, and expected return are exactly the same. And they're going to give you the information about the benefits paid out to people who are already retired. And OK, here's the extra detail, which makes this one a little more complicated then. The prior year service cost amortization for this year is $17,000. Where is that from? That's from something in the past that happened, maybe a previous amendment, uh, and that is now being amortized for this year. So however it came about, the instructions tell you 17,000 is being amortized this year. Let's, let's jump into our worksheet. So here's what we're gonna do. Here's how the worksheet starts at the, uh, okay, this says December 31st, that's strange. This should either say January 1st, 2014 or December 31st, 2013. I'm going to go ahead and change it to January 1st. Yeah. At any rate, that is your beginning balance in your PBO and your plan assets. And you do the math. Your PBO is greater than your plan assets by 13,800. So you have a pension liability at the moment. The first thing you're going to have to do when you have one of these problems with an amendment is you've got to do the amendment first. You have to. So that amendment immediately increases your liability. And that is affected immediately. See, we're going to add that up right away. So we credit PBO for 120. We don't debit pension expense. Again, this is something that will be amortized slowly over time. So. We debit prior year service cost of 120000 That is a part of other comprehensive income is what that is. You guys may have to review that other comprehensive income. So that will sit on your balance sheet and accumulate other comprehensive income. Kind of a purgatory of the accounting world. Kind of in between. Okay, but that's the important thing is you do it first. And you'll see why that is. So service costs, they give you the service costs. Uh, service costs are going to increase your future obligation, and they're also going to increase your pension expense. And the number they gave you is 58. Interest costs. So here is why you have to do the plan amendment first. In this case, the plan amendment is done on January 1st. It'll almost always be done that way if they give you an accounting problem from uh, you know the textbook. So they said the settlement rate is, I believe, 9%. You're going to take 9%, not of 560, though. You're going to take 
9% of the 680. Okay. Times not. I don't know why it does that. Sometimes this thing uh, just doesn't write correctly. It just draws lines like that. I'm trying to write 9%. 9%. Okay. Take that 680 times by 9%. That's where the interest cost comes from. The asset return. So you had a positive return. Um, again, this is simplified, but say your expected and your actual were the same. That means your pension expense is lower, your plan assets go up by your return. And here's an, an, another line item we didn't have last time. They said that this year you're going to amortize $17,000 of that prior year service cost of 120. So as I amortize it, what that means is I'm getting rid of this other comprehensive income, accumulated other comprehensive income item. I'm crediting it and it's it's becoming pension expense okay so I'm, I'm i'm knocking this value down and it goes towards the pension expense for the year eventually the whole 120 will be pension expense but it's amortized much the same way the total cost of a building becomes expense uh, appreciation expense but it takes time uh, contributions so we contributed to the pension plan that will lower our cash and that will increase our plan assets. That's pretty straightforward. We paid benefits out to retirees. That's going to lower our plan assets. And that will increase, or I'm sorry, that will also decrease our, uh, our pension liability here, our PBO. What we do at this point, we've got every item we need. We draw a big line here. And we do the math. We're going to add everything up and see. You know, I like to make I like to make two rows really. One row is the journal entry. This is the change in all the accounts for the period, right? That's what journal entries are, right? This is a change in an account over the period. The other row I like to make below that is what is the balance right now? Okay. And so I put an extra row here. I put what is the accumulated other comprehensive income on December 31st, 2013, you know, the day before uh, this fiscal year. Um, that, that would be important normally to know. In this case, you know, we didn't have any uh, prior year service costs or any gains and losses. So we're starting from a clean slate. It's pretty easy. Um, but anyhow, yeah, we just add up all these debits and then subtract the credit and the pension expense is $83,920. The journal entry will also include, as you can see, a $65,000 credit to cash. And we'll be debiting the other comprehensive income prior to your service cost for $103,000. Because remember, at the beginning of the year, we debited it for $120,000 and then we credited it for $17,000. How do we get this number? Well, again, we have to do the math on the right-hand side and say, okay, my PBO at the end of the year is 759,200. My plan assets are 623,480. Let me move my face. Move it up here. And so the difference between those two numbers is 135,720. That is going to be our pension liability at the end of the year. We started out at, at this number here. We ended up at 135,720. So the difference there, the journal entry, 121,920 credit. Pension liability. So there's the journal entry. Okay, oops, let me go back, sorry. And that is that. Hope you enjoyed the video.